dear students we are doing electrochemistry and around us many electrochemical phenomena are taking place so we will discuss these examples what are taking place around us which are actually electrochemical in nature corrosion is one of such phenomena in your daily life you have seen the iron articles they get rust or the silver articles they get tarnish when the silver ornaments are new they shine but after some use they become dull in the same way the old statues or the medals or the copper uh, utensils they develop a green coating what is this actually this is corrosion that means these metallic objects they react with the gases present in the air or the atmosphere and develop some coating on them usually this coating is an oxide layer but it may be of any salt why we are taking corrosion here because it is an electrochemical phenomena and the term let me tell you the term rust is only used for the iron articles dear children we also know that these bridges or these machineries are all made up of iron and the rusting of iron causes enormous damage let me explain you what is corrosion and define it actually it is defined as the wasting away of the metal when the metal reacts with the atmospheric gases the oxide layer or the salts are formed on the metal surface this is corrosion rusting is corrosion but every corrosion is not rusting it is an electrochemical phenomena let me explain you the mechanism of rusting any article that is made up of iron when it comes in contact with air and moisture it starts developing a brown coating on it this brown coating is the rust chemically it is hydrated ferric oxide now any point on the iron which first comes in the contact with the air and the moisture it starts acting as anode anode means loss of electron will takes place at that point that is oxidation so the iron on that point loses electron and it is oxidized to ferrous state these electrons they move through the article and it reduces the oxygen on the other point in the presence of the hydrogen ions now from where these hydrogen ions come actually the atmospheric carbon dioxide in the presence of the moisture forms carbonic acid that is h2co3 this carbonic acid provides hydrogen ion the oxygen in the presence of the hydrogen ions accepts electron and get reduced and form water it all takes place at cathode i have already explained you oxidation takes place at anode and reduction takes place at cathode and oxidation is the loss of electron and reduction is the gain of electron in this way the iron is oxidized to the ferrous state which is further oxidized to the ferric state then the iron in the ferric state reacts with the water and is oxidized to form ferric oxide chemically the rust is fe2o3.xh2o since we know that the rusting causes enormous damage it may be the reason behind an accident when a bridge falls so we have to prevent the rusting the very easy and the convenient method is to cut off the iron article from the contact of air and water for this we apply the paint or the oil coating we can also use the chemical known as bisphenol we can also take the use of some more reactive metal 
either we can coat the iron article with that metal for example coating of the iron article with the zinc is known as galvanization so in the place of the iron that reactive metal loses electron and get oxidized and the iron article is saved this is also known as sacrificial protection we can also use some another metal like tin now let me tell you what are the conditions that increases the rusting if the medium is acidic it increases rusting if the water is saline then also it increases rusting because the saline water has many ions even the carbonic acid also the increase in the concentration of the co2 increases the rusting because co2 dissolves in the water and form carbonic acid which in turn provides hydrogen ion but the alkaline medium reduces rusting because alkaline medium produces oh ions that neutralize the protons or the hydrogen ions which are required for rusting so now i hope it's very much clear that why the corrosion is included in the lesson electrochemistry because actually it is an electrochemical phenomena and there is a development of anode and cathode on the iron article or any other metal surface the next application of the electrochemical phenomena is the cells and the batteries the cells and the batteries we are using in day to day life we use a dry cell in the transistor or in the torch or we use a small mercury cell in our wrist watches or the hearing aids the battery is the combination of two or more galvanic cells in the series now we will study about some commercial cells but these commercial cells are classified as the primary cells there is one more category of the cell which is known as a fuel cell that we will study later first of all the primary cells or the primary batteries and the secondary cell and the secondary batteries first of all what is this primary cell primary cells or the primary batteries are those batteries which once used up they are wasted and we have to throw them away they cannot be recharged but the secondary batteries are rechargeable just by applying the electric current external electric current they can be recharged and we can use them again and again as you know that the battery used in the inverter is used up in our day to day life can be recharged but the cells which we use in our remote or the watches once used up we have to throw them now let us take the two examples of the primary cells and example of the secondary cells i will discuss their construction and working dry cell it is a primary battery or a primary cell in the dry cell there is a zinc container that acts as a node the cathode is made up of a graphite rod surrounded by manganese dioxide the electrolyte is the paste of ammonium chloride and manganese dioxide the zinc acts as a node that means it will lose electrons and it gets oxidized to zn2 plus state these two electrons are accepted at cathode manganese is reduced from plus 4 state to plus 3 state by accepting the electron and ammonia gas is formed this ammonia is not released as gas but it combines with the zinc ions and forms a complex the reactions at anode and cathode and the transfer of the electron from the anode to cathode is responsible for the production of the electricity now since it is a primary cell it cannot be recharged and once the chemicals are used up we have to throw it away the zinc metal develops pores after some time since the zinc container develops hole so to prevent the leakage the zinc container is surrounded by some steel or iron coating initially the coating was of a hardboard 
just now I have explained you the construction and the working of the dry cell which we are using in our daily life. Dear students, just I have explained you the primary batteries and the secondary batteries and why we have to throw away the primary cells and not the secondary cells. And then I have explained you the construction and the working of the dry cell. The dry cell has anode and cathode and there is an actual transfer of electrons from the anode to the cathode which is responsible for the production of electricity. And this dry cell cannot be recharged and once used up it is wasted. I hope the working of the dry cell is very much clear to you.